Okay, let me show you three different x-rays from three different patients and have a close look. This is number one, this is number two, and this is number three. Number one, number two, and number three. And let me go back to number one. I guess we can safely say that in this x-ray right upper lobe is airless and the pathology is confined to right upper lobe only as it is well delineated by clearly visible horizontal fissure on the inferior side and in fact from all sides because of abnormal airless appearance. Unfortunately no history is available to help us to make a diagnosis so we'll only have to depend upon radiological features that are visible in, in uh, this x-ray. In the second x-ray we can also safely say that the right upper lobe is airless and the pathology is confined to right upper lobe for the same reasons that we saw in the first x-ray. No history is available. And for the third x-ray, I guess we can say exactly the same thing. Does it mean that all three patients have same pathology? And it does seem that way in the first side, doesn't it? No history is available either. Well, if we said that all three patients have same pathology, we will be absolutely wrong. And that is my point today. Although all three x-rays have similar appearance, but you can dig out features in all three x-rays that will point you to totally different conditions that need different management. And all three x-rays show very clear features of three conditions only if you had a close look. Now let's see how we can use our knowledge to differentiate. So the first x-ray notice the horizontal fissure is not horizontal anymore it is oblique. The lateral edge seems to have moved up superiorly pulling the rest of the fissure with it with the exception of the medial edge and because of which we can see the lobe is v-shaped. The lobe has decreased volume and in fact the third point that you should notice that the right hemidiaphragm is markedly elevated as, as compared to the left uh, and the lung itself seems to have a small volume as compared to the left lung. There is no air bronchogram also notice that the patient is intubated and you can probably see a nasogastric tube. The patient is intubated. There is a tube, endotracheal tube inside the trachea. So a machine is breathing for the patient or should I say the machine is making her breathe. All features point to right upper lobe collapse. The right upper lobe collapses superiorly and medially the medial border of the right upper lobe does not move so the whole lobe shrinks towards the medial and it also uh, collapses anteriorly which of course we cannot say uh, we cannot see on a on an AP view it is very common for intubated patients to have extra secretions that they cannot spit out these secretions can go into lower branches of the bronchus causing the lobes to collapse in this case the cause of right upper loop uh, collapse is mucus plugging in the right upper lobe bronchus. Right upper lobe collapse is also very common in asthmatic patients as well because of the mucus plugging and you can frequently see it on x-rays even in young patients. Now the lower collapse refers to collapse of an entire lobe of the lung any lobe of the lung may collapse due to obstruction of the supplying bronchus. The causes include uh, number one, luminal uh, and the examples are aspirated foreign board and the other most common example of luminal obstruction is mucus plugging uh, as in the case in the example that we saw earlier. So the mucus has clogged this branch which is the right upper lobe branch of the uh, right main bronchus. This is the right main bronchus. This is trachea. Uh, 
this is left mean bronchus and this is the right upper lobe bronchus the clogging of the bronchus from the inside by the mucus has blocked air entry into the right upper lobe causing lobar collapse resulting in the decreased volume of the lobe and creating unique features that we can use to identify upper lobe collapse in a lung right upper lobe collapse in a lung the second cause of a lobar collapse is intramural uh, for example bronchogenic carcinoma which arises from the walls of a bronchus and eventually block air supply and causes lobar collapse the third cause is extrinsic for example a compression by a tumor for example there was a uh, there was a tumor that was growing right in front of this uh, this uh, bronchus uh, which and it grows enough in size that it puts enough pressure on the branch that cuts off the air supply to a lobe this by the way is a contrast bronchogram which is an obsolete procedure nowadays as new technologies have taken over last time i saw this procedure done was probably 20 years or more ago they used to put contrast this is this is contrast uh, in tracheobronchial tree to make it stand out against the uh, rest of the lung parenchyma this does not happen any anymore there are better technologies to reveal the anatomy and the pathology that uh, this procedure was used for okay now this one is also a case of right upper lobe collapse but for a very different reason what you see here is commonly known as reverse s sign or sign of golden s or golden s sign the fissure is creating a reverse s sign okay whenever you see this sign you should think of presence of a mass in the right hilum here the mass is occupying space forcing the medial edge of the fissure down as well as creating extrinsic pressure on the right upper lobe bronchus the lobe loses its air supply and collapses creating this unique shape so the shape of the fissure only in cases where a right upper lobe is collapsing can be a very full a very helpful hint so this is a case of right upper lobe collapse because of the presence of a tumor in this area now in this case there is no loss of lung volume the right upper lobe itself seems to have a decent volume and what is the most helpful hint here is the visibility of air bronchograms you can see bronchi filled with air passing through the parenchyma and they stand out because the rest of the parenchyma is opaque the air bronchogram are frequently associated with infectious processes that fill the alveoli with fluid this is not a lobar collapse at all this is a case of lobar pneumonia the visibility of air bronchogram however does not always mean that there is an infection process going on as always history will help you in making a diagnosis for example history of fever and lethargy in case of a lobar collapse could point you to an infection an x-ray on a patient with asthma who has no history of fever uh, and shows signs of uh, lobar collapse could make you think of mechanical obstruction means mucus plugging and so on and so forth now this is another example of reverse s sign